Okay, so today I was going to talk about Emacs and or Vim, although unless Connor shows up, it's just going to be Vim, since I don't use Emacs. Um, so Vim is a text editor for the command line. Uh, so I, I you can most of the time you use it on Linux, but since I have it on Windows, I'm going to use it on here. Uh, so yeah, you can, you know, do editing in this the same way you would, uh, like, you know, whatever you use, Visual Studio Code, Sublime, Atom, hopefully not <laughs> Notepad or Gedit, something, but it's really tiny there, I don't know if I can, I don't think I can zoom in on it right there, so, I'll just go ahead and r run a virtual box. Yeah, I tried it. Well, I might come from. Mm. Let's see. Uh. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, that'll, that'll do. <laughs> Might actually be a little too big. But, uh, yeah, so that'll work. But before I get into that. This is something that I was just briefly talking about. This is like a game online. It's just vimadventures.com. Uh, but, like, it basically just makes learning Vim a game. That's pretty cool. So, uh, it, you, may say, you may say, like, why do you need a game to learn Vim? But the keyboard shortcuts and stuff, or just not even really shortcuts, but the way you use Vim isn't very intuitive. It's like, you see HKJL are the keys that you use to move. Like H is uh, left, K is up, L is right, J is down. So this is actually a pretty neat way of learning Vim. Like as you progress in the game, it like gives you, uh, it teaches you different commands like going back. So see, so I'm trying to use a command right now that I don't have unlocked in the game yet. But um, it's kind of a fun way of learning it really and <laughs> it's funny when you first start out because you forget which keys move around so you'll just like run into walls like this <laughs> like I can't go anywhere but uh that I don't know that's something kind of cool I guess um and like I was saying beforehand I actually don't remember a lot of the <laughs> a lot of all of these commands you can use so it's just going to be like basics but this is actually a really nice cheat sheet to use so uh, I'll have a link for that <coughs> anyway so basically to get started with Vim if you don't have it installed like if you can't just type in Vim and it doesn't open then you'll have to install it uh, so I mean if you're on Linux that's the thing that we talked about Tuesday sudo apt get install Vim um, you know, and then once you have Vim, you can start it up, Vim, then the name of your file. So, I already have a file I created, Vim.txt, and so it opens it up like this. It looks kind of like the less command did that we used before. Uh, and something you'll notice really quickly is like you can use the arrow keys like you normally do with a text editor but you can't just start typing normally I already had it in insert mode then so if I start trying to type now well I would quit hitting keys to do so yeah it's like I hit about three keys before it started typing the reason is if you look down here Vim has like different modes it has insert mode which is when you can actually type things and then it has like just the regular mode or normal mode for moving around so it's kind of hard to see the cursor but it is moving around um, yeah so to move around that's your H J K L keys I was just talking about which if you think about it it actually is I don't know it, it's like it's in a straight row so it doesn't kind of make sense at first but the middle two are for moving up and down and the far ones are for moving left and right but you get used to it uh, 
and then to go into insert mode that's I insert now I'm in insert mode say you know you can type whatever you want um, and then to get out of insert mode hit escape so that's just like basic movement but uh yeah the more you practice with them like you can actually move around a lot quicker than you can uh, with like using a graphical editor like this or something and just clicking to where you want to go and things like that so um, so yeah, if you get good with like them or Emacs you can actually work a lot faster with code uh, so but yeah the other commands you can so I'm at the beginning of the word goodbye right now you can go to the end of the word with E although you'll see it goes before the letter E so it always goes like to the last character it doesn't just go to the very end um, and then the re reverse of that is B to go backwards so that goes before the first character uh, what else yeah I was gonna say I'm gonna have to refer to this cheat sheet but then there's copying and pasting <laughs> in Vim I think it's called it's called this in Emacs too they call it yank and stuff so like if you look yeah here cut and paste like cutting or copying is called yanking I'm not sure where that originates from but um, yeah I know you can yeah so let's paste Sam, <laughs> he's not at the meeting at the moment. <laughs> Let me just quickly uh, go offline. So yeah, so I, I yanked, yanked, <laughs> copied the line goodbye, and now I can paste it. I can't even see my cursor up there, but uh, yeah, so it's like uh, the yank command is what I used here. And then to paste it, it's like capital P. So you can paste as many times as you want. And then, uh, oh yeah, I didn't I didn't realize it worked actually. No, huh? How about that? Hold on. Let's see. So. mean open like a square bracket mm. oh no I'm not getting it I'm like I'm on that line right there so I'm going for the blank space but I don't know there's you know you can so you can delete like delete a, the character you're right at and it immediately goes in insert mode you can delete a whole line um, you know you can you can do a lot of stuff like it's it's kind of insane how m many commands they have like I don't know but uh, yeah delete cut to the end of the line that's a useful one so it does that and then you can paste it that's capital uh, D so there and now paste it back Yeah, so it's wherever you're at to the end of the line. So if I do it right here, capital D, it does that. And then, bye. Yeah, capital D. Um, it's that one. I don't know. Cut and paste and moving around is most of what I do. But, yeah, you can, you can search with, like, regular expressions and replace and stuff and like everything you could do in other editors you can do in this but uh something that's cool is you can customize them 
So if you open the vimrc file, it's like in your home directory. And then you can add things like this. Along my Linux virtual machine, I actually have like, uh, I mean, it's a little bit longer than this. I have like some shortcuts, but the, the thing you see at the top, maps JJ, so just pressing J twice kind of rapidly, it maps that to the escape key. So I don't have to hit escape way up there to go out of uh, insert mode. And then syntax on just tells it to do syntax highlighting. Uh, but I have a, what is it? Yeah, as I say, Josiah sent me his vimrc file a while back. It's yeah, these are some pretty good ones. Uh, see, I knew you were a mascot, Ben. I could see it in your eyes. Yeah. But no. Uh, yeah, tab stop. That's like how many spaces are gonna be in the tab. <coughs> or, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> for, for Python programmers out there, <laughs> and then uh, you know, set number shows line numbers, and then you can set color scheme too. Uh, I forget what I had mine set as before. It's probably the end. Anyway, all those things you can do in Vim too. But if you edit the the file I just did, vimrc or dot vimrc then it'll use those settings every time you run Vim. So now if I run, if I open that file, it shows line numbers. Uh, if I write like some code or something, uh, actually no, it's not gonna work in this file because it's a text file. whatever you want to do. So yeah, it automatically indents for me and does syntax highlighting. Uh, yeah. But no, yeah, if you wouldn't mind, send, send me yours. Um, I'll look at it because as far as I know, this is this is like all I've used. I think I added like maybe one or two lines to it in my virtual machine, but um, I don't know. I know, I think Emacs is more customizable like Connor had a bunch of stuff on his like with different colors at the bottom of the window and everything but uh, yeah like actually Emacs is really nice for debugging it's like I don't think I don't even know if you can do that with them um, yeah oh something <laughs> something I've just been doing without thinking about it is there's a problem a lot of new users have with them about figuring out how to exit Vim. <laughs> and <laughs> it's like a running joke that they get into Vim and then they can't figure out how to get out. So to get out, first you need, so I'm in insert mode right now, first you need to get out of that. So I used my shortcut, JJ got out of it. And then you can do Vim commands with the colon. So I press that and now you see it down here. So you can type in commands and it's the same things I had in like the vimrc file. So if I do like color scheme, I can use tab to see what else they have, like elf word, sure, whatever. Uh, you know, you can, you can do all the commands I did in the vimrc file from here, but you can also write is just colon w. So it'll say, yep, was written. You can, um, quit with colon Q that exit but well if you make an edit though like say I want to um, say you for Python doing single quotes if you just do like something like that and then try to quit, it's going to say there was no write since the last change. So it's basically just saying you have unsaved changes. Uh, you can write and quit at the same time. Just do colon W, then Q, but write, then quit. Um, 
at the same time you can force it to quit and it won't save those changes so if I do something like that then hit quit and an exclamation point that's the, gonna force it to quit and so if I look at it again it doesn't have those changes so uh, yeah let's see what else we have ranking deleting Show the first line of the document, start of the line. So yeah, do you remember how to select Ivis? Like mark text, I mean. <laughs> wow, how'd you know that, bro? <laughs> so say I do, uh, Now I don't need STD there, so the AW oh well, A like puts it into insert mode after the current character you're at, so AW I don't that's in visual mode. So to start it in visual mode, <laughs> you have to do V. So V in visual mode AW W. Oh, let's see. So let's mark a word. Start with lime wire. Sure. Later. So I have something selected, and then you can yank like just the mark text. Like if I can find the command for it, but uh, no. Okay, so when you're in visual mode, you can just use the m movement keys to move around. Wow, <laughs> like using A W. <laughs> Oh, uh, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't. It, the, the yank commands up here, I don't know if. Like I said, there's a specific one for yanking just the mark character. Let's see. <laughs> Bin tips with you. B. Okay, alright, well, that's simple enough. Well, B. Alright, so yeah, you can select by just going into visual mode, moving around, and then, uh, you know, B to cut or uh, Y to copy. So, B. Yeah. Uh, you can insert a new line with O, so it just like inserts a line after the one you're on, so and it automatically puts you in insert mode. So that's kind of useful for like the case where I was just at. Like, all right, O. Um, so say like you had that, then you're working on some other stuff down here, and then you're like, all right, I need to add a line. You just do that. say yeah they have a help thing here too so if you just do help it's like brings up their tutorial thing uh, Emacs has a tutorial too that's actually really long <laughs> but uh it's pretty nice too though so so O <laughs> control O does that and so yeah this oh wow all right so this is like going back in my history of the files that I've done so oh wow 
house actually way back. <laughs> anyway. Save as, close, delete, yeah. Uh, don't think I have any ice on this, no. I'm going to start up my virtual machine and then try to do my best at Emacs, which actually, now that I think about it, I'm probably about even on them now, because I haven't used Emacs in so long, but... But uh, the one that come Vim doesn't come with necessarily all uh, Linux distributions, but Vi does, Vi, and the commands are all like pretty much the same, um, and you just can't customize it as much. I don't think like the Vim RC file I was doing. I don't think you can do that with Vi. No. <coughs> I'll, I'll refer to you if I ever forget it again. <laughs> you need to pass the word paper when you have rows. Uh, let that open up. <laughs> Dot w w w w. I don't know. <laughs> it just came out. I don't even remember what this is from now. <laughs> Oh, it was, it was something else. No, it's, it's a long story. So, <laughs> funny Emacs cheat sheet. You're cold? Is that you, bud? Yeah, it, yeah, it always gets cold in this room. Um, m more Zoom. So, yeah, Emacs, you can run. If you just run it like that, I think it should open up. Yeah, it opens up in a window by itself. But if you want to be a hipster, you can run it in your terminal with dash mw. That's how Isaac does it, right? No. <laughs> Isaac's like, I'm too cool for Emacs. Uh, so yeah, it opens up. If you just open it up, I mean, you can open it up with um, a file the same way I was doing before, like make a new file. Like a file like that so now it's a blank file but uh, if yeah if you do it no yeah so if you open it up like I did the first time though it goes to like the welcome page and they have a Emacs tutorial here and they tell you the controls so the way the the shortcut screens like that are formatted the C is control and the M is the meta key which is I think yeah left alt yeah yeah oh, oh Connor's here I'm, I'm doing it wrong <laughs> no uh, yeah I, I yeah I briefly did Vim Thanks to a cheat sheet because I can't remember much on it, but so now I'm just gonna like do Emacs real quick. Um, so yeah, like the C is Control, M is Alt, and it's like C dash H is Control H, and then C dash H uh, T for the tutorial that would be like Control H. Yeah, it is on mine. Why was it is on yours? Escape. Pretty sure it's all on mine. I don't know, but so like do the tutorial. That's Control H and T. So now it goes into the tutorial. The tutorial like is kind of interactive actually. Um, yeah, so it tells you Control T dash character means hold the Control key while yeah C M Alt T. Yeah, see Connor, stay right, stay like that. 
I don't know, maybe different on yours, maybe on mine, but it probably is since you actually use. Hmm. I think I would rather it be all closer. <laughs> <laughs> but uh no that's cool to move around in Emacs it's not as simple as Vim it's like control N goes down to the next line control U goes wait nope nope that was wrong control P goes to a previous line so it's like next previous next previous yeah you can but Th then you have to move your hand. You know. <laughs> Bush wouldn't be proud of us if we were moving our hands. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, the point of like I, I think the point of being good at a terminal editor like Vim or Emacs is being able to do everything without like moving your hands very much away from the standard position. So I don't know. But yeah, you can do control N, next line, control P, previous line. And then going forward and backwards, the character is like F and B. Yeah. So, and then to type, you just start typing. Mm. Uh, wish I remember the debug thing. You know, it's like. Emacs slash NW, it's, I think I remember it. It's like Emacs, NW, then something, and then GDB. I don't know. C. Wait, you mean like Meta X? Um, no, I don't think it was. I don't know. Anyway, we're trying to figure out something that's not even related to this UV. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, I don't know. In exclamation point. Alright, so, no, not one. Alright, well, there it goes. Eh. Anyway, but that's what we would do. Yeah, th that is it. Yeah, GDB, and then it'll say that, and then like, whatever file you're doing uh, but <laughs> they'll learn that if they take OS with Tang <laughs> oh <laughs> what is yeah I've always used like escape, escape, escape. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like that's the, that's like the just, that that basically just says, uh, forget everything I just typed in command wise. <laughs> uh, hold on. For starting out, though, it's probably best to just run just Emacs by itself because it's a little bit more welcoming. Not kind of terrifying, I guess, but uh, yeah, you do like Emacs tutorial and go through a tutorial with you. <laughs> no, no, all the controls are still the same. 
Yeah. So yeah, it tells you all that stuff. Um, here, let me see if I can zoom in some. Probably not gonna be able to in this. Nope. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be able to. I can. I was wondering if I could do it from that. Anyway, can can you guys see it though? Like, yeah, I, well, yeah, but if you start off the tutorial. Like it tells you, it goes through actually a little bit more than the basics, I think. Um, so see right here, the end Emac session type control X, control C. So you just don't even take your finger off the control, you just do hold control and hit X C. Um, and that's how like all their commands work. It's, I mean, you get used to it, and you just do them really quickly. Yeah. Um, So it's like, do that, now type CV, view next screen, so it's like, in Emacs, this is actually kind of nice, because you can, like, go down a lot of text really fast with that, control V, it's like, <laughs> now I'm all the way down there, and I also don't know how to go back up quickly now, so hey Connor, how do you, uh, what's the opposite of control V? Like, you know, go into the next view or next screen, like. <laughs> uh, oh, whoops. It's talking about right here. I remember it's really it's pretty cool with with Emacs. I don't know if you can do this in Vim or not, but like if you hit Control U, then a number and either text or a command, it'll repeat it for that number of times. So like if you say uh, Control U ten, then in asterisk it puts it in ten asterisk like that. Like that's pretty cool. Um, then undo, yeah, control slash is undo, control forward slash. I don't know what control backslash does. <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so like the say up here recommend control B F N P so control N is the next line control P is the previous line B is back of the character F is forward those are the basic movements and then um, the control B one there's there's I don't remember them but there's ones where you can move it so that uh, wherever your cursor is, it'll put that spot like in the middle of the screen, at the top of the screen, or the bottom. Uh, do you remember those? I don't, I know it says it somewhere, but I mean, no, I don't have it open in this. Yeah, you can, so like, this is they call windows buffers in this don't they yeah so you can have like more than one window open too in emacs uh, or buffer i think it's like control so that's like to switch to a buffer uh, control x control b opens a new one then control x oh, i actually remember more than i thought i did so control x o like switches to the other one or something uh you can do like 
What is the open open file thing? Yeah. Wait. Yeah, in Centilla? Oh. Yeah. No, that's that's fine. Uh yeah, it's probably gonna have me open something else first. Oh not scratch. What is that? <laughs> that goes forward. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, well, there's that, so I'll just. Uh, your your commands might be different, but um, have like no files in there. I don't know. You. You can so you can open up a file over here, then. Switch to the other window, read some stuff, uh, switch back to this one, or let's say switch back to it, there it is, and then, yeah, work in that, and then you can do, um, you can have like buffers open and not like visibly open, so you can switch them with control X, then B, let that go, then so at the bottom it's like switch to a buffer you can type it in um, but if you don't remember what it's called or something you can just do control X B without letting go of control so that's where it listed them so then you would go over there and um, so I'm like yeah I want tutorial whatever uh, yeah buffers that's kinda neat I also don't know if you can do that in the game open more than one window you can and if, if you can't you could always use tmux I mean I used it in OS <laughs> huh mm. but um yeah what else how do you say you select things in Emacs then just yeah Control Y or okay, yeah, I totally didn't do that. <laughs> ah. Yay, I messed it up. <laughs> but you actually you can screw the tutorial thing up all you want though, because this is just a copy. Like if you close it and run it again, it'll n nothing. None of your changes will be there. So. Uh, Okay, so Control J apparently puts in a new line. I just kind of randomly wait. Yeah, I was like, I don't know why I started typing Control J. <laughs> I'm just doing that. So yeah. Uh, oh yeah, so they list it right here actually. Control X. Control B lists the buffers. That's what I was doing with that. And then Control X1 to get rid of the buffer list. There you go. Uh, switch to the buffer or file. Find file. So see, like, I hit tab again there because I didn't know what's in this directory. It's somebody else's GitHub thing I haven't used in a while. So it's like, oh, well, here's all the stuff. And I'm like, all right, I want to look at the setup. <laughs> and then, so it's all in one window. Now, I, if I don't want to have two windows open, you want to switch back to your other ones, like the tutorial. You do control X, then B. And it defaults, like it says default tutorial. It defaults to the last one that you had open, so you can just hit enter there and it'll use that one. Uh, but if it's a different one, you can always just do control X, control B, find it, and then open it like that. Uh, what is the thing to close? Yeah, yeah, control X1. So control X, 
number that just that sets like the number of uh oh whoops that sets like the number of windows that's open I think so control X two control X three yeah so you can have a bunch of stuff open yeah two is horizontal three is vertical but yeah you can do that and then switch to them and um, open up whatever you want like so now I want to do the tutorial in this one and then in this one I might want to do um, I don't know like no it's control X F yeah uh, yeah so you can have a bunch of stuff open and you can I've all I used uh, control X O to just go between them it just goes to the next one so next window next window got some stuff next window I should not save any of those com <laughs> uh, any of those changes, but yeah. So that's cool. You can have a lot of stuff open. Um, what we were trying to figure out a minute ago was how to run the debugger. Like you can run the GDB. Is that the new? It's just the new de debugger. I don't know. But anyway, you can run that in Emacs and have that running in like one window and still view like the code in another window and it's just like your debugger and you know an IDE or something it shows the current line that you're on and everything it's actually yeah I would say it's, it's actually like a lot better in my opinion it's a lot easier to use because you can just print out you can print out the memory and stuff really easily you can um, you know just use just like your variable names like you would in the code and stuff so Yeah, MetaX and GDB, the name of the file that you're debugging, so uh, whatever it is. And then, so GDB is running in, in this window. Of course, it's saying that the file I tried to run it on is not in that, so. Actually, I think just parser? Okay, no symbol found. Anyway. I don't even remember the commands, but if, yeah, if you run it on an executable file, you have the like, oh, I just compiled my C++ program, and you want to debug it, you'll do meta x, gdb, enter, then the name of the file right here, so, uh, and then it'll run in that window, you can, I think, all, yeah, so if you do, like, a new window from the debugger, I think it defaults to, like, your program that you ran it on, or, or the main program, so. And you can do, like, disassemble in it, which is nice. I'm not even sure what all this is right there. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought, I was like. <laughs> it clearly doesn't. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. So you can custom. So how do you customize Emacs? <laughs> but yours is so customized. He just found it online and used it. Find one of those. Well, I'll just use this. <coughs> A whole tutorial for it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just looking at, it, I think it. I think you could probably customize Emacs more than them.
but you can. There's packages for them too, isn't there? Yeah, I've never installed any because I'm okay with just them. But mm. Mm. so, anyways. This is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, that was from the other day from the bath secret. But yeah, so and then how this looks in um how this looks in like the terminal, so uh, it's like opening and not splitting the window just like that so it does it I mean it doesn't necessarily look as pretty but still doable I'm using Vim again. I'm trying to use my JJ shortcut to go out and insert mode. Uh, wait. So what is what is right and stuff? Yeah, we should, should probably should probably go over how to save a file. <laughs> Just was it Control X, Control. Is it this? Just Control X. Control X S? <laughs> Python command. Oh, I didn't know that. I did Control C S. Run Python? Anyways. Okay, whatever that did. Um, probably ran it and closed it like without even opening up a terminal. I don't know, but Control X W. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. Okay, so yeah, just you write a file. Seeing dot py. So Control X Control W to save. Control X Control C to exit. Of course, I've got the other two buffers open, so it's saying, hey, you want to kill them? Yes, kill them. <laughs> or as Dr. Chang says, put them on death row. Well, referring to threads, but yeah. That was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> and it was even funnier because the threads put themselves on death row. <laughs> uh, yeah. So now we've got seeing.py over here and if we look at it import this and then you can decide you like vim more than emacs and use vim yeah <laughs> yeah if i can show it then you can run your python file and read the vim of python yeah, well, I mean, what other language has a Vim? I mean, come on. Anyways, that's, yeah, anyways. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, that's pretty much it. There's, like I said, if if you want to try them out, um, there's things. I think there might be, like, a mini game for Emacs, too, like I showed. But yeah, Connor, you weren't here for that. Yeah, there's a... This is this is a game I, I showed for Vim. It's like pretty cool actually. Yeah, for like learning the 
keyboard stuff for them. For them? Like, you, you just play and you match. That's really cool. Uh, but no, like I said, if you want to try them out, I'll have links for the cheat sheets. Well, I didn't really use this cheat sheet that I looked up for. Well, it's not in this, but that I looked up for Emacs, but I'll have one for that too. <laughs> but it's a horse. Tungsten? Tungsten? Oh wow, okay. Yeah, let's, let's play with that. I'm guessing it's still expecting something else. Yeah. <laughs> if you just do it in the terminal, it just closes the terminal. If you just do it in the terminal, it closes the terminal. <laughs> I d well, yeah, I don't. I normally just type exit, but D is, yeah. That's like using control L instead of typing clear. Anyway. <laughs> 